Well, hello there, and welcome to a special edition on location of The Bottom Line, part of Carlucci Broadcast International. I'm Mike Carlucci. We are at Tokyo Dome, as today is an off day of the Premier 12 Baseball Tournament. Big tournament, a lot of qualification possibilities for lots of great baseball countries. And it is an off day. This is the day where all the teams practice. And this is in conjunction with Baseball Outside the Box with my good friend, Paisano, uh, we always have a good time working uh, long distance together here, all these great uh, baseball tournaments. Peter Caliendo. Come state tutti. State bene in tutto il mondo. Yes, that's a little Italian. We're just doing mm -hmm. it for both of us. But welcome, everybody in the U.S. and around the world. Thanks for being on the sh listening to the show today. Yeah, I'm, and uh, he'll do the Italian speakerage, and I'll do the mixing of the <laughs> sauce, man. I make the best <laughs> Italian pasta sauce. Nonetheless, we're not talking sauce here. We're talking baseball, international style here. Uh, this tournament has been fantastic from day one. We've had many locations. We've been in Mexico. We've been in Korea, uh, Taichung, Taiwan. We just were there last week. Now we're here as we get down to the nitty-gritty, just a handful of days left for possible qualifications from any country still alive for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The games have been so much great surplus of excitement and fun for the fans and for the entire baseball community. Peter, uh, right now, just really quick, give me your take on what you've seen, what you've liked so far in this tournament. Well, it's By the way, it's the Premier 12 tournament in conjunction with the WBSC. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, great pitching, great hitting, defense. Mm -hmm. You know, here we are in the Tokyo Dome, one of the greatest venues in the world. Oh, absolutely. I mean, unbelievable. So it's been a lot of fun to watch and also participate in a lot of ways. And I tell you, um, watching some of these teams, looking at the rosters and all the management, we got some of the big shots, some of the big names that are coordinating and running the shows. I mean, some of these ma ex-managers were World Series heroes, of uh, major college players, uh, like we have Scott Brocious, World Series MVP Absolutely. for the Yankees. Yeah, uh, Juan Castro with Mexico. Yeah, he was with the Dodgers and the Reds. Always had a good. Uh, a, a, he was a great player, uh, utility guy. Could do everything around the, the field. He play outfield, infield, the whole thing. So. Uh, and then we have, of the course, Japanese manager, pretty famous, played in the Olympics. Oh yeah, he's a he's playing a, he's the a, World Baseball Classic. Superhero here to all the Japanese uh, community, and uh, of course we had uh, on Puerto Rico, we had the great Juan Gon Juan Gonzalez, Gonzalez running the team. So we have some big shots here. This is this is all, this is big money, big marbles, great baseball uh, being displayed here uh, in 2019 here at the uh, uh, World Premier 12. By the way, uh, please do subscribe here on the bottom line. And uh, also, uh, if you want more details about the WBSC, go to w WBSC.org uh, and catch them on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, the Premier 12 Tournament, get all the results and all the action and all the history as well. So anyway, so here we are. Uh, today we're just kind of uh, watching some of these players uh, get together. They're stretching, working out. I'll show you the field here in just a little bit. But uh, all the teams today are practicing at the Tokyo Dome. One of the, like uh, Peter okay. said, Peter said this is one of the best uh, – mega baseball places in the world and off day and then tomorrow they get back into it. we have two games uh, here at tokyo dome uh 12 noon and then at seven o'clock uh japanese time and uh i know i think japan is playing uh, tomorrow night um and they are playing i believe australia is that true yeah i think so yeah we'll have to check the schedule a little bit later how about the excitement last night Thirty-two thousand, whatever it was you yeah thirty-two thousand fans here in the dome and we mm -hmm. had a cheering sections everywhere I've never seen japanese baseball it's incredible Fans in right field were they're synchronized, and they're singing, they're dancing, you know, coming up and down off their seats, uh, and nonstop. And we're talking uh, a one hitter. Japanese beat Mexico three to one, and Mexico could have qualified could've with a victory. Now they have to hold their horses here for a bit. Says Jap the Japanese played so fantastically, great defense, uh, timely hitting. They scored early in the game. And, uh, yeah, one hitter, just the one home run on Jonathan Jones of uh, Team Mexico hit the solo shot. Uh, got him on the board, but that was it. One hit, and they were done. Three to one, Japanese over the uh, over Mexico. Speaking of the Japanese team, a few minutes they'll be in the Tokyo Dome, right in front of us, holding their two-hour practice, which is always fun to watch. Extremely organized stations. They, I mean, they run like you know, smooth machine. Coaches don't even have to say anything. They already know what they're going to be doing, uh, and you can learn so much from them. It's incredible. Really, a lot of fun watching. And we're very lucky and fortunate to be in this venue watching the Japanese practice and doing the show. Mm -hmm. And before we continue, don't forget, BaseballOutsideTheBox.com. Check us out. Go on Twitter, Facebook. Baseball Out is the uh, the name of the Twitter and the, uh, Instagram and all the social networks. Please forward it to all, everybody in the game. As, if you're not aware, Baseball Outside the Box is an educational uh, podcast. We bring in some of the best minds in the, in the uh, game of baseball who mm -hmm. love the challenge, the status quo, and that's what it's all about. 
we want to change the game a little bit when it comes to the development because there's a lot of new ways to be able to do things and develop players, and we want to teach that to everybody around the world. And we had an interesting uh, conversation earlier. You can catch that on uh, the bottom line. Also catch it on Baseball Outside the Box. We talked to a fantastic uh, pitching coordinator and instructor, oh, yeah. former ball player, and he's here as a technical commissioner, um, Enrico Burgos. So make sure you catch that show, which will be airing uh, just prior to this one. Uh, very informative, and he, Enrique gave, gave a lot of uh, great information for up-and-coming uh, pitching coordinators, pitching coaches, things like that. Is he starting that academy? I believe in Brazil. Yeah, he right? works for yeah. Major League Baseball, and they've been he's been, they've been running an academy for a while there, and now they've got 17 players mm -hmm. that they signed to minor league teams. Mm -hmm. 15 of them being pitchers. You know, Enrique is specifically there to develop the pitchers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's four or five guys that are playing from Brazil already in the big leagues. Yeah. So that seems like like to be a market for future. Major League players. Man, well, some of those Brazilians, they, they exercise like crazy. Oh, they, yeah. They're in great shape, and they've got a lot of possible talent. They just need the right instruction, the right formats to become uh, Major League possible quality uh, pitching. So, Absolutely. So that's why Enrique is down there, and he's doing a fantastic job, him and his staff. Oh, by the way, just on the schedule, I, when I said Japan was playing, they're not going to play until Saturday, I believe. But we have uh, the Chinese Taipei taking on the United States. Mm. So Chinese Taipei, United States, that's the noon game. Uh, tomorrow on the Friday, the 15th of November. And then Mexico has to play Korea uh, at 7 o'clock. That's going to be a big showdown as well. And then we'll, of course, find out who's going to be playing. Uh, Australia will be playing in, uh, in Japan uh, the next day. Yeah, so. and eventually it looks like uh, Korea's got to face uh, Japan. This place will be rocking and yep. rolling. 40,000, 50,000 people in this place because mm -hmm. I remember the last Premier 12, 2015, mm -hmm. Otani was the pitcher for Japan. Japan they yeah. were winning three no in I believe the sixth inning, mm -hmm. and they sixth or seventh seventh inning. He had yeah. seventy five pitches. The Korean team did not touch him, yeah. not not many foul balls either, you know. And they took him out. They took him out, replaced him. And Make then, a long story short, boy, they lost four yeah. three. The the roof in the at the Tokyo Dome fell in <laughs> pretty much. It was it was the uh, fans here. Just the air went out of this place. Right? Yeah, it was it was, it was a, tough. Very damaging there. Obviously, uh, we just got a. Um, a text here from our good buddy who does a great job, him and his team. Of course, Murray Cook's company, Brickhouse, the Brickhouse Group. They do a fantastic job around the world with all the baseball turf and all the baseball stadiums around the world. And uh, Budgie Clark, who's just one of his main men, uh, are saying something about uh, – he sent me a text here about the field. Uh, and this, of course, artificial turf, but they still – <laughs> he says, get off the logo and turf. <laughs> I guess we were down there checking out. We took a picture. And he's, oh, he must have seen us. Yeah. So Boy, we, he's got eyes everywhere. Yeah, he? we need to have him come up and do the show. Let's see. I'll text him to come up. Yeah, and, come, uh, come up. Okay. We'll say come up to the box here. So I'll say, Budge, uh, come on up. Oh, what a great job they've done on the field. Everywhere they've been. Yeah. Just outstanding. Yeah, Chad and uh, Cooper, who's based in Australia. Um, and if you're not aware, you know, we've got WBSC standards yeah. that are very high because mm -hmm. we want to make sure the safety of the players mm -hmm. are – Upmost importance. Absolutely. So, but uh, anyway, I was I I would go ahead and turn the the camera on, but I want to wait for one of the. I think the Japanese team is coming up here to practice. So we'll wait till the players get out there. We'll kind of turn the camera on, so you can get an idea also to see this very good, fantastic, spectacular uh, dome stadium, Tokyo Dome. It just looks like, uh, yeah, it, it reminds me of a better Metro Dome. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, Metrodome was uh, had its issues, but this one is a is a high quality. Built in 1988. Yeah, it's been around a little while. And and by the way, uh, I'm working the I'm doing the English announcing here at Tokyo Dome on the night games. And the a young lady, well, uh, yeah, I'll call her young lady because she looks great. But uh, she works for the Tokyo Giants. She's been working for the Giants as the Japanese announcer here in Tokyo Dome for 40 years. Wow. And I call her a young lady because she doesn't not look like she's. You know, I, I asked her, "What did you start when you were two years old?" Because this woman. <laughs> And she does a great job, and she's fantastic to work with. So, um, yeah, her name is Ms. Wana, Wana Tanabe, and her first name is Miho. So she's been with the Giants for many years, Tokyo Giants it is, and uh, she got me a nice hat and jersey, real nice lady. So it's been fun working with her, and I look forward to working with her on the weekend. So nonetheless, a uh, lot of history here at Tokyo Dome, a lot of great players have played here, Japanese heroes of baseball, of course, uh, players that have gone on to the major leagues played here. And, of course, so they have um, two leagues, uh, total teams of 12 total here in Japan. So, obviously, baseball, big-time show here uh, here in the uh, a small little island of Japanese. I call it an island because it looks like an island, but it's linked into Asia. But it looks uh, – Jap it's funny because it, Japan is the size of uh, half of California, right? I yes, mean, yes. And they got 38 million people here. So, oh, the, the, yeah. Crazy. Japan alone has got 100 – 
10 million people. Yeah, 38 million in, to in Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. That's Tokyo. amazing. Yeah. 38 million people. And, yeah. and I guess that's why they're extremely organized. You have no yes. choice to be organized. The, how they put the building structures and the, the real estate, how they put everything. Yeah, super organized. Maybe at times we've dealt with people that are a little bit too too organized. But hey, it's better to be over organized than They're not none. being organized at all. We, and how about how organized they are in the event as hosts? Oh, fantastic! And Everything's on time, schedule's yeah. perfect, and they yeah. even hand you Japanese scripts. Yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. they thought I they thought I spoke Japanese. So, uh, no, great people, very organized. The local organizing committee, along with the WBSC, great people, and the WBSC. Uh, who we uh, represent, they are fantastic. They work their butts off. They work 16, 17 hours a day. It yeah, seems a lot like. of you go in there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you come in at uh, 6 the next morning, and then you see the same guy still working there, same clothes, everything. They're working hard around the clock to make sure this event is, is supreme, as it has been uh, this year and, of course, four years ago when they started there in 2015. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about, we didn't get a chance to talk about the other show, but World Series just concluded. What a miraculous uh World Series victory for the Washington Nationals, the Cinderellas, if you will. They came out of nowhere. Uh, they beat, upset the Dodgers in, in fine fashion. And, of course, they ran across and uh, just bombarded the St. Louis Cardinals' World Series chances with a four-game sweep. And then the, the series with Houston, it was most bizarre. Uh, everybody won their games on the road. It was incredible. Yeah. I've never, I don't think anybody's ever anything, seen anything like it, you know, where mm -hmm. the home team loses every game. And both outstanding teams. What was amazing is that you got the Nationals. I mean, what was the record? Like 19 and 34 coming out of the... 1931, yeah. They looked like they were dead. And, I mean, Martinez yeah. was... They are ready to fire Martinez, I'm sure. All, yeah. Everybody uh, mm -hmm. outside the organization. And, boy, they just rebounded. And uh, talk about a team effort. I mean, everybody played well. I mean, guys off the bench, you know, the starting lineup, the relievers. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a fun World Series to watch, right? Yeah. Going down the... It's always fun when it goes down to seven innings. Yeah. No, it, or seven, seven games. Seven games. And I tell you that... Uh, Howie Kendrick, who is a very solid player for the Angels for many years, and then his contract ran out. They were trying to bring younger players in, so he was just trying to get a job somewhere. Dodgers had him for a couple of years as a, as a fill-in player, and then he went to Philadelphia, and then, hey, Washington eat him. In, in fact, he led the, the Nationals in hitting. He had a three forty four average. Not, of course, he didn't have the at-bats if he was a full-time player, but he was solid, clutch, and, boy, he sure showed up in the playoffs. He and, sure uh, did. Got the MVP for the uh, National League Championship Series. And almost could have been an MVP in the World Series. Had a really – the last two games, their game six and seven, played fantastic. But Strasburg was the man for the Nationals. Oh, he was. And yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled also for the man who put that team together who's been working hard behind mm -hmm. the scenes, Phil Rizzo, uh, Mike Rizzo. Phil Rizzo, his dad, being yeah. one of the scouts. Chicago, and yeah. Mike Rizzo, the GM of mm -hmm. the Nationals, mm -hmm. a Chicago native. Uh, mm -hmm. Just thrilled because he's the type of GM, and you can tell, that mm -hmm. incorporates a lot of scouting – along with a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, technology and mm -hmm. statistics. So, you know, as you know the game nowadays, it's getting a little bit overdone with statistics. And, yeah. and you know, some teams only go towards statistics. Right. You know, uh, the Rizzos didn't do that. They were great. They kept the scouts there. They yeah. worked their scouts. They depended on their scouts. So They kept it consistent. Thrill yeah, yeah, thrilled mm -hmm. for them. I think it was fantastic yeah. that, that they won the World Series. Yeah. Oh, not to mention, last time they won it was, what, 1933 or something? 19... Yeah, 1924. 24. Yeah, 1924, I believe. And they were there's the Washington Senators. And they're in the American League, and they beat the New York Giants, I believe. So It's always fun to um, watch a new team win it, right? Yeah, and it's it's the old Expos. They, they, grew, oh, they, yeah. they, they grew up and were born the Expos, so I'm sure a lot of the Montreal people had some heart still in it, but maybe not because, yeah, that's, that's our team, you know. So, um, But, no, congratulations to the Washington Nationals um, organization. Uh, came out of nowhere as a wild card team because they, they were highly uh, – uh, expected to win the series over the last three, four years. They won division titles and were favored, but always got knocked out of the division series. This time they went all the way, and, and good good for them. Good for those guys, those hardworking guys like uh, Anthony Rendon, and we mentioned Howie Kendrick, and the, the new kid, uh, who's he's a, he just turned oh, 21. Soto, he's amazing. Yeah, Juan Soto. What a great kid and a great lot of manners and very mature for his age. Absolutely. And he's going to be fantastic. He's got a great career ahead of him. The question is, uh -huh. what's going to be next with Strasburg and Rendon? Aren't they free agents? Yeah, Rendon, of course, has ties to Houston because in a Houston Texan yeah. nat native, uh, and if the if the Houston Astros, um, uh, you know, want to try to key on him, they can move some guys around the infield there and put him to third, or he can actually play first base as That's well. Be a big payroll, yeah, right, and those two guys, big chunk of money. And Strasburg, uh, the the Padres now are uh, there's rumors they're going to go after wow. him maybe um, because they got the new manager over there now. They want to contend. Now. It's, it, it's time for the Padres to contend now with the Dodgers for yeah. that for the NL West lead there. Um, and some more news. Good Italian Tony La Russa heading yeah, to the Angels you were, with Joe Madden. You were saying that here when we were down on the field. Yeah. Now, that's great news for Angel fans and the, the organization. La Russa, I mean, he's gold wherever he goes, you know. 
Uh, fantastic guy. He's been, yeah, Oakland A's, St. Louis Cardinals, and World if you Series. you didn't know, Madden's Italian also. Yeah, he is. He goes no? Italian. Yeah, his, uh, his, his dad was uh, Irish, I believe. His mm -hmm. mom was Italian. My, my so, Italian. So, yeah, you know, that those, those are good guys, yes. you know, <laughs> automatically. Let me ask you this. It was, uh, we're speaking of the uh, Houston Astros. I guess something came out, some picture. I forgot. I think Mike Fires, I think, said something about the Astros. Uh, uh, you had cameras in the center field bleach, bleacher areas. Did. Just recently, Is yeah. that a bunch of crocker? You know what? Is it because he's mad at them and he figured, you know, because maybe was, yeah, there was a contract yeah, I don't know. difficulty and now he goes, It's I'm happened gonna... in the game before, not the first time. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, my thing is any kind of strategy, anytime you can get, like like when you're in war, if you try, you know, when you're fighting in the war with a country, you always try to get anything you can on that team, no matter what. But if there's a written rule, is there a written rule saying that I can't? There think? absolutely is. Yeah, yeah so that's the problem. You can't use technology outside. The yeah, well, yeah, you outside. shouldn't be using technology. But if some guy's walking by and he sees a guy lift his hand and gets a signal, that's that's fair that's game. That's fair game. Matter of yeah. fact, when you take a lead yeah. off at first, we teach. Yeah. You know, if your eyes can move and catch the, you know, the sign of the catcher. Yeah. You see breaking ball. You see off speed yeah. pitch. Good time to steal as yeah. a runner. Right. Obviously, yeah, you could steal on your own vision, but yeah, obviously, technology no, not cameras. Not. That's not good. But my thing is, was there really cameras? I mean, shouldn't ML be would have been out there looking say, hey what's that guy doing with a camera what you know there's had to be somebody there with the because the, that's during the playoffs there's always tons of mlb security yep. and coordinators like commissioners technical commissioners like they're, we hear for the they're definitely going to investigate premier 12 yeah we're going to find out but uh yeah that's, that's going to be and then they're saying well okay they beat the dodgers though in the world series in the seventh game and that was a dodger stadium there was no cameras yeah, then no cameras. so you can't you know but anyway but that's just another there's thing there's no cameras in the tokyo dome none now Except you, the TV camera. They actually want you to, to shut your phones off. <laughs> yeah. But you can't tell all the Japanese fans to do that. It'd be a, be a riot. So um, They love their phones. Everybody loves their phones. I think everybody loves their phones all over the world now. So Anyway, interesting uh, thing. But now a, a topic for another time for the Houston Astros. We'll see what happens. With that. Real quick, so new manager now getting hired. And uh, uh, let's see, we just found out um, Mike Matheny has uh, got the gig with the Kansas City Royals. Yep. Um, you brought in David Ross from your my buddy. Hometown. Yeah, pl guy played, for, played you. for us in yeah. the Pan Am games with at sixteen. Yeah, uh, but they also have uh, the manager of uh, the Padres, the former manager of the Padres, uh, that joined the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, his, his, uh, his first Green? name is well, Andy Green. That's Andy right, Green. Andy Green. Joined. Yeah, Andy Green. And then uh, your buddy Joe Girardi is hooked up with the Phils. I wish he was my buddy, but he's Italian, so he, no, I figure he, he's got to be your buddy. Yeah. He's got to be our buddy, right? Yeah. He's Italian, good man. He's from Chicago. Yeah, another Chicago guy played at Northwestern. Yeah, and our good very buddy, smart. Yeah, oh, very good, very uh, strategic. Oh, you mm -hmm. talk about good strategy, man. Girardi's the we guy. We love listening to him on MLB Network. Yeah, and by the way, speaking on MLB Network, who's mm -hmm. going to be joining us tomorrow on the field? It looks like. Uh, JP Oh JP Morosi. Great guy. Fantastic. It's maybe we good. can get him on the show. Yeah. Maybe he's down there right now. No. no. Oh, I, 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 I'm looking for Budgie. He hasn't come. I sent him a text that, to come up here, but he hasn't. Still uh, hasn't. Oh, he says he's got a conference call. Budgie. Yeah, that's how busy Budgie is. He's got conference calls and he's they won't let him handle a rake though. It's a do not touch the rake. rake. Yeah, let them handle the rakes and he's got a conference call. Um yeah, so Girardi got the gig with the Phils. Yep. So Joe Girardi is uh, employed. That's good. Um but um our good buddy, though, Hensley Mullins, we wish him well. Oh. He, he just got a bench coach job with the uh, Miami Marlins. We wish him well. We wish him up another opportunity. Yes. I, in my heart, because I'm a Giants fan, I was hoping he'd get the gig with the Giants. But, hey, different managers, diff, you know, different departments, uh, director of operations came in. He wanted to bring his own guy, and he hired Gabe Kepler. Yep. So, but um, there's going to be a team going after Hensley Mullins oh. soon as manager. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got he's, to manage in the big leagues. He's, he's prime. smart. He, yeah. he knows the game. He's been around. Yeah, uh, great person. The players will love him. I'm sure. You know, even as a bench coach, they love him yeah. now. So Mullins will be managing in Major League Baseball. Yeah, very soon. He's prime and ready, and he deserves a shot. And he what would do. What a great guy. Yeah, great guy. Great human being. Great man. Great family man. And just a great, like you said, a smart guy. Knows this game in and out. And hopefully, uh, he'll get the call here uh, sooner. Sooner than later. So looking down there, the yeah. ground screw's getting ready, but I don't see the Japanese team. Yeah, well, let's just give people a shot here yeah, without pushing the button. Let's just give them a shot. What the Tokyo Dome looks like. Unbelievable. Yeah, look at that beautiful place. It's a palace of baseball here in Japan. Let's see, if we're, uh, let me take a look at that, Pete, from your angles. Yep. Up higher, yeah, lower. No, you're seeing it perfect. Okay, perfect. Seeing yeah, the whole stadium go. there. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, we're, oh, we're great beautiful. directors here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we both work for Fox and CBS combined. Michael Carlucci, the director, Pete Caliendo, associate director and artist. I go uh, this way here, so yeah. And I sit near here. There's a booth to the right there, right over oh, here. Oh, you're right there. Yeah, see the glass booth oh, there, yeah. folks. I thought you were higher above. No, no, right there. That's the glass booth where I sit with the video people. 
uh, run the voice scoreboard. voice of the WBSC Premier 12, Michael yeah. Carlucci. Yes, the English version. Of course, we have uh, Ms. Wanatanabe, the Japanese announcer, also the Tokyo Giants full-time announcer. And then the broadcasters, I believe, or well, they're, they're behind us right here with the gate closed. I'll just kind of go like that. That's where the, where the fence is closed. Yeah, they have a lock that. They don't want the broadcasters coming early. So <laughs> they, they, they raise shenanigans in there. So that's where our broadcasters, including J.P. Morosi, will be over there tomorrow. And check out um, on the field, the, our grounds crew, our Japanese grounds crew sweeping up everything. They're so clean in the stadium. And you know what, Dern? Before practice, you can see everybody, all mm -hmm. the workers in the stadium, cleaning the seats. Yeah. It, they actually had a drill for... Mm -hmm. uh, Earthquakes, you know, yes. so that way in case there's an earthquake, evacuation, how do you get evacuation needed, yeah. drill, and mm -hmm. I mean they are so organized. How yeah. about the foul balls when uh, uh, you know they they whistle uh, the ushers? Oh yeah, the foul ball on the stands yeah, yeah. to warn people about the foul ball. How creative is that? Yeah, that's uh, they they are so they follow that script and they every they are just I can't even search the words. They're just so organized and into it and they do it the right way which is a nice thing you know? and folks so. there's media for japanese media on this side already getting ready there's a lot of media on the field they have to rope it off let's see yeah they're um, right there is, and this media is yeah. not only in the tokyo dome but mm -hmm. it's been in chiba japan it's been in taichung taiwan excuse mm -hmm. me uh, chiba taiwan yeah. Um, it's been everywhere. They follow everybody. You know, that, that was our director with his big hands and big thumbs. Why don't you point there where they're at? See, point, Pete, point where there they're at. There we go. They're on the field. Right and, there. and they're in that blue right and there. They're yeah. also in the blue right there. Yeah. Want to see my finger again? Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. With our own production crew. <laughs> yeah, we're top notch here. We're uh, better than Fox, CBS, <laughs> and uh, ABC combined. Yes, we had you betcha. We did it right. We do it the right way. So anyway, yeah. So but like, we have fun on this show. Oh, absolutely. And Pete, right? yeah, we do. We we have barrel full of laughs all the time, and that's the way it should be. And we get the opportunity to travel and do these games and work the tournaments. And yeah, we're, we're so very, lucky. Very privileged. And uh, but uh, like you, like Peter said, yeah, the, there's media down on the field uh, and also uh, just to the left of us. So there'll be full. Uh, there's like maybe 20 guys there, 20 guys and ladies. There'll probably be about a hundred. Uh, when uh, the Japanese team plays, absolutely, there's yeah. a, uh, over a hundred, and yeah, they got to rope it off because there's yeah. so many of them. But yeah. they're also respectful of the field. Right, they don't just go anywhere they want. They're in certain yeah. locations. Um, well, if they did, uh, budget uh, get on them. Oh like yeah, a, like a new suit. turn on the sprinklers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or get the big giant fire hose. Don't you know? get on the field. Fireman's hose. The Fireman's hose. Yeah, blow them off there. So I think our next interview is going to have to be Bungie, no doubt about it. We got to get Bungie in here next. Maybe we can. Uh, I got to ask him about how how, yeah. how it works. I mean, well, they, they, the fields are so maintained so yeah. well how they get them ready so. we'll we'll do that that'll he'll be the uh, the guest that should have been tonight with yes. us <laughs> well, we, well we, we, we were just going to be you and i but we figured let's get budgie in here but budgie is uh, doing some work he's on a conference call he's busy guys you know he's got he's, he's another 24 7 guy but we'll get him for sure on the next show yeah. fantastic well i guess uh we have some work to do well let's let's uh close it out yeah, yeah let's we covered a lot we'll we'll chat another time here but we are here live at tokyo dome uh, this is an off day as they're preparing the field for the next uh, three days here as the tournament is starting to close and a lot of teams still in qualification to get that uh, opportunity uh, of participation in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics next summer. For the bottom line, remember, dig deep to get all the info you need from the bottom line. I'm Mike Carlucci from Carlucci Broadcast International. Great having you uh, viewing with us. And please do subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for shows and guests, if we can get them, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Uh, nonetheless, we appreciate watching. Do subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Be safe. And Peter, close out your show. All right. Folks, keep watching because we're going to have more guests coming up here from the Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have some of our technical people, some experts mm -hmm. in the game of baseball. It's been a pleasure, as always, being by my good buddy, Michael Carlucci. I'm Pete Caliendo. Baseball Outside the Box. Check it out. And don't forget, go to our social media, Baseball mm -hmm. Out, all the way across the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the show that interviews baseball's best coaching minds who love to challenge mm -hmm. the status quo. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Pete Caliendo, with Michael Carlucci. See you on the next show. Absolutely. And real quick, too, get all the details, results, and scores, and the schedule, and all the history, all the details going on here in this great Premier 12 tournament. Log on to W bsc.org or follow them on twitter facebook instagram the whole thing it's all about premier 12 baseball see you next time ciao and sayonara sayonara ciao goodbye